Hello everybody, welcome to the official live cast of the Group O crucial round three match between Spinky and Fez. We've got a knob off, very exciting, both Imperial Nobility. Um, it's very hard to tell the team apart, honestly, with Imperial Nobility, like, you know, with the two different colours and everything. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make it red and blue to make it easier to see which knob is which. Um, I can show you the table right now. As you can see, Go Go Bay has definitely qualified from this group. Um, he's playing Andre though, so Andre could beat him in the last game. Which means a win for Fez keeps him in with a chance. A draw for Spinky keeps him in with a chance. But a win for Spinky will definitely, quali and will definitely qualify them. And a loss for either will eliminate them. But yeah, so if Spinky wins, he's in. If... If it's a draw, Spinky's maybe in. And if it's a win for Fez, Fez is maybe in. So there you go. That is the uh, situation in terms of the table. And I can tell you in terms of coaches, Fez is from Great Britain and qualified through the Troll Ball World Championship qualifier. And Spinky is from Spain and qualified through the LH Liga Super Blitz. So there you go. A very exciting knob off. And oh, oh, this is the bow, isn't it? Is this the bow ogre? Yeah, this is the bow ogre versus the flaming spiky ogre. So I've got to say, I, uh, we, we can we can see yeah, it. Like, th you can maybe get away with this, like black and white versus red and yellow. It's a bit hard, though, isn't it? Like, the problem is with the stripes and everything. And all the gold, all the gold and the feathers and the stripes, it is hard to tell them apart. I think I think red and blue is the best. So yeah, blue is Spinky, red is Fez. Oh, it gets the touch back. Definitely gonna give it to the Blodger, one would assume. So Fez's team has the two Blodge Blitzers, the Block Ogre. Four guards, leader thrower, block thrower. Honestly, I might like I might like this build the most now. I was always on the guard, double guard train, but now I think maybe the double block is better because the way you win is by your ogre getting lucky. Um, Spinky on the other hand has the four guard, has the block, ogre, has the leader thrower, has a dodge. Only one dodge blitzer. The other one's got tackle, and he's got a, a dirty player as his extra skill. So there you go. What is a stake? I, I did, I did do that already, General Atomo. But what I can tell you is, briefly, I'll surmise it. Um, if Spinky wins, he definitely qualifies to the knockout stage. If it's a draw, Spinky maybe qualifies. Maybe Andre does. And if Fez wins, maybe Fez qualifies. Maybe Andre does. Whatever happens, Go Go Bay, the Dark Elf coach, has definitely qualified from this group because Dark Elves are better than Imperial Ability. <laughs> and you know, maybe he's played well as well. I'm not, you know, I'm not. And it's this is nothing against Go Go Bay. Is you know, it's just a bit of humour to say that Glorious. knobs are rubbish. No, I won't give in. And Until instantly I'm caught without foul. And I will defend. I will defend. Sent off. Nice skill, Hello, mate. From the S. Nice to get to you, live. Ah, thank you very much, Jeff. It's it's nice to it's nice to get to live. So yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Staying fantastic for eleven glorious months. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, Gogo -Go had your build at Equus to be, yeah, fair enough. I, I do like that build. I, I think that's what I thought was the best build for normal NAF style. I think that's the best build. I'm on board with Christopher B's build for normal NAF style. I did decide to go with a slightly more durable and overtime focused build for this. This being unique, having the overtime, potential overtime. So, who knows? I think maybe I should have just gone with others. 
We'll see. We could just have a big ogre blitz here, right? And pile through the gaping hole. If you pile. But then you don't want to get wrestled here, you don't want your ogre wrestled. So you could just 3D and stuff, you could just 3D somewhere. 3Ding with the ogre seems usually the correct play. Get those knobs in the hole. Wow, Salakas, that sounds like you're trying to be rude. This is a little bit risky if he doesn't get the like the ogre activation or knockdown. But yeah, he can he can double it up at the sides. So um it will actually be safe even if no matter what happens here. Actually would have would have made it safe first, right? He could have he could have stood here first. So that even if this was a dub skull, a triple skull. If in the moment if this was a triple skull, he could have blocked him and got hit on the ball. So he, he could have just moved this guy out there to make it completely safe. But now he gets to move it somewhere better. So you know, it's all about trade-offs, isn't it? At the end of the day. I kind of like making it safer, but triple skulls do happen, but now, because he didn't make it safer, oh, he gets to move it there later, so it was just definitely wrong. <laughs> but, you know, didn't have to be. <laughs> he could have moved it somewhere else if he wanted. He had the freedom to move it somewhere else. Fendor P. Dimmy excited by the Fen usage there, no doubt. A battle for the knob throne, indeed. Maybe not right, because maybe Fez could win this battle, but Andre could win the war. But Andre's got to beat Gorgo Bay, who is top of the league with Dark Elves. But on the other hand, Gorgo Bay really has nothing to play for. Like, of course, he'd prefer to win the group and stuff, but if Andre's got a chance of qualifying, then that means Gorgo Bay will already be top of the group and the result won't matter to him at all. And, you know. If somebody's trying the hardest or not trying at all, like there is a difference. Like I'm not saying he wouldn't try at all, but he's got no motivation at all, right? It's a big difference between, you know, trying your hardest, giving your best, or like maybe tilting and not trying so much. Like no one's getting paid for this, right? So it's like, you know, why should he? Why should he give 110 percent? So he just might not. I'm not saying he's going to throw, but like he's definitely going to be more focused and trying harder if his life was on the line. Uh, yes, this is not such a new time bank glitch. It is weird, but I, it's not new. It's been around for a while. Um, yeah, I don't know why. Sometimes it's only one code, sometimes it's both. But yeah, sometimes it sets the time bank at two uh, when it is unused. Oh, gets the, doesn't get the knockdown. He blitz the wrestler only on two dice. I don't like that. I think if you're gonna blitz on two dice, you blitz this guy, right? Because he hasn't got block. If you're gonna blitz this guy, then um, get three dice on it. Are you just gonna allow the uphill with wrestle? I mean, it is an 11% chance, so it's probably not too terrible, but... Yeah, it's happened, it's happened quite a few times. Pretty pretty regular keep that somebody will start off with two minutes. It's rare that both start with two minutes. It usually is just one. I've got no idea what triggers it or, you know, if it's going to be fixed or anything, but... Um, yeah. I don't know if it... Glitches in the game for them as well, right? I don't know if they're both looking at 7.30. It could just be a spectator thing. No idea. Oh, he's going for another foul. With the Garda? He fouled with a Garda? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Spinky, spinky, spinky. 
This is uh, not the way to win a game. I mean, he was unlucky to get spotted, sure, but like, wow. Fouling with your uh, guard player is pretty outrageous. Like, I just, I just let him do the uphill here, right? Is it great? No. But, see, he's not even making the uphill. Like, this is the thing, he just, he was, he was unlikely to make it, right? Only works 11% of the time. Yeah. Spinky spunked it a little bit. He's in, he's in a bad way, isn't he, already? Down two players. He's made two fouls and uh, done no damage and had two send-offs. So, yeah, he's in, he's in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble on his offense. It's a knob off. <laughs> Should have been three fouls. <laughs> I mean, the first foul's fair enough, right? Because you've got dirty player. Like, I don't agree with taking dirty player. But if you do, then using it's fine. But uh, once the dirty player's gone... No, I really hated that foul. I mean, with a... with a... with a guarder. With a guarder? No, they're not identical builds there. They, they, I mean, I think every build has four guard um, blockers and a leader thrower and a blodge blitzer. I think every, every knob build has that. And then they vary on whether you go guard ogre or block ogre, whether you take a tackle blitzer or, two, or a second blodger. And then what skill goes on the th thrower, or in this case, a dirty player. Um, and yes, as you can see, the red ogre, which is Fez, has a feathered crown and a ribbon. Beautiful. Whereas Spinky has got this incredible flaming helmet, loads of spikes, and a shield on his back. Yeah. No girly ribbon for him. No, oh, makes the dodge. Yeah, maybe maybe the Euro Bowl uh, makers were fans of knobs and <laughs> wanted to <laughs> wanted to facilitate <laughs> a strong uptake of knobs. <laughs> no. <laughs> Who knows? I was gonna say maybe Dimmy wrote the rules, but then Dimmy, uh, Dimmy hates star players, and the uh, Euro Bowl looks really, uh, really favourable to stars. Oh my goodness, the King Ogre is dead. <laughs> okay, this is looking really bad for Spinky now. Oh my goodness. Ribbon, Ribbon Ogre proves dominant. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, this guy's got a little crown as well. Homemade crown with a uh, with some feathers on. Wow! Oh wow! I mean, this is huge now, right? Fez has to be rather excited about you know he's got to get like thing thing is now right what fez has to do is like mentally switch gears between stopping the score 
and turning over, right? He's really got to go for the turnover now. A million percent. He has to be focused on. He has to end this half 1-0 up now. Like, while it will still be a success if he if he draws, like, nil-nil, if he gets out of nil-nil, it's still technically a successful drive. But only technically. He has to turn this into a 1-0 win now. This drive. Also, with the, the way the touchdown is four, is the tiebreaker, right? Um, oh, let's look at this blitz. 1-D, skulls into a full pow. Okay, he's still got a chance. If you look at this, Fez has scored one touchdown and so has Andre. So they've both scored one touchdown. So, it's actually really important for Fez to win this game scoring two touchdowns, right? And preferably not conceding either. So a 2-0 win for him is much better than a 1-0 win. Or a 2-1 win as well. It's, it's still better than a 2-1 win. So... I think this blitz that he made, he, he absolutely had to cover the sideline. I think that was a mistake by him. After he made that blitz, he just stayed where he was. I think he had to cover the sideline. And uh, now, desperation play from Spinky. You know, he might get this. Looks like he will get this touchdown. All right, look, you don't need to... Ratamo, you're being a little bit cheeky. The point is... It could, he could have been in a situation where he was on two points, in which case a 1-0 win was enough to qualify. Or he could have already been, you know, had a much more touchdown score than Andre. Just letting people know that he's got the same amount of touchdown score as Andre and the same amount of conceded as Andre as well. So it will actually be critical how many touchdowns are scored in this match. Not just the result. Touchdowns scored and touchdowns difference could both be critical in this case, not in every case in this tournament. So there you go. Fez really has to like push in hard here, doesn't he? With <laughs> his knocks. <laughs> he has to stop the score. And he has to um he absolutely ha not only does he have to stop the score, he has to he has to counter score as well. I think I think this is a mistake from him to have not covered the sideline. And uh, yep, yeah. as it is, Spinky might get the score next turn, and might even you know win this half one nil despite despite two foul removals, Olga Kaz, Lyman, KO. Yep, just had to cover the sideline last turn. Okay, maybe he can do it. Maybe he can get it back enough. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So he does the double rush to get the stand firm in front. And then what, this guy here? Or here somewhere? So I like putting in the re-rolls, to be fair. I do like putting in the re-rolls. Here or here is, is like the obvious squares for this guy, isn't it? That's fine too. Maybe even better. Because <laughs> then he might screen with this guy. Oh, he's going to double rush the ogre! Whoa. Oh, maybe the ogre should have gone in there. But this is okay too. This is a really good ogre. Oh, wow. He's won the ogre battle. Comprehensively won the ogre battle. As Fez. Outrageous double rush. I would have just like, you know, I thought, oh, we'll bring him back here. Then you're screening with, like, you know, they've made a little screen as well. But no, that could be it. That could be it.
Hello, Mrs. Fez. Looking very good for Mr. Fez right now. A horrendous start for Spink. Spinky? Spinky. Spinky, this is looking really, really, really good. Really good for Fez. This is a disaster for Spinky. An absolute disaster. He has to, what, four plus dodge? Can he blitz? Yeah, he can blitz. He just 1D powered him, but it's just a block, isn't it? I think, oh, he'd already blitzed. I think his play was four plus dodge, blitz this guy, like pow, and then three, three, two to score. Oh, pow him and then jump over. And then score. I think he had to he had to go this turn, right? I think he had to score this turn, Spinky. And the fact that he hasn't scored this turn means he's getting surfed and losing. Probably. Well that helped. Helped a lot, actually. Maybe I spoke too soon. These guards are out of position for Fez. Maybe he should have re-rolled that, honestly. Honestly, maybe he should have re-rolled that punch. Probably just got a blitz in now, right? Whoa. Super interesting. Yeah, he doesn't have a guard or... available. He really needed that. He really needed this knockdown. 75% fail. He could have re-rolled it. And probably should have, honestly. Honestly, really probably should have re-rolled that. Oh, now he's blocking with him. But that means he's not blitzing with Wrestle. <laughs> does it mean he's blitzing with the ogre? I guess it does. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh, baby. Gets the full power. Smashes one on the sideline. Absolute ogre dominance. Doesn't follow. Love following it there. Oh wow, I think that's a mistake not to have followed. Turn six. He's got to think about scoring. He does the one day before the pickup and gets the knockdown. Oh my goodness. So now we've got the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven handoff. Maybe seven and then handoff here. Or he could just get him into scoring range. No, he's going for the handoff. Makes it. And he's away. Ho -ho! Here. And then does he rush? He almost has to double rush. Almost has to double rush. Does the 1D instead. Gets the full pal. Wow. Wow, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. Knocking. Yeah. Yeah, so the ball would just go that. I, I like I like following. I, like fo I definitely like following there. I think it's a mistake not to follow. Just because... You don't want the ball to go there, like you want to be able to pick it up this turn, right? You want to be able to pick it up. You want to get this guy and you want to go away. So he got the absolute, you know, perfect result. I guess if he'd followed, then, um... No, I just, I just, I just like following. I mean, he obviously thought something different to me, didn't he? It doesn't mean... 
either of us are right or wrong. Or like one of us is right and one of us is wrong. But nobody knows which. One, two, three, four, five, six, rush. Yeah. So it's a dodge and a rush to hit him. I think he had to make the rushes here, honestly. So you just can't get hit because the rushes were a 1 in 36 fail. Whereas this is like 3, 2, 5. Which is quite likely. A 3, 2, 5 is like quite likely, isn't it? I don't know what it is. Like what, 16% or something? Much more likely than you failing up the rush. So... Yeah, he had to. He had to do those rushes last turn. Absolutely had to. It's just one of those things where, like you know, it, he's got to make them anyway to score. He actually has to make them to score anyway. So doubly had to make them last turn. He doubly had to make them last turn because they required to score anyway. So yeah, yeah, he million percent had to make the rushes last turn. Well. Funny enough, now of course it's better for him that he didn't, because if he blitzes him, he would if if he'd made the rushes and he just based him, he would have had to have uh, rushed to punch him. Whereas now he can blitz him without having to rush. So he did save himself a rush this turn, but. I think you just have to. It'd have been it'd been two squares further down. He wouldn't have been able to get him. He'd have had to have like done a four four three to hit him. You'd have to do a four four three two two to hit him. It's like so much better. Can't make this three dice. He can serve somebody, can he? He can't serve him. Oh, it's turn seven. Okay, errata. I didn't know which, which turn it was. <laughs> errata, errata, errata. He didn't have to do the touchdowns. To, he didn't have to do the rushes to score. So, take that back. Oh, wow. Is he going to dodge? He's going to blitz with him. Okay. Gets the ball down. So now he can just run here. He won't be able to even tag him. No, he's rushed to be not tagged, right? No, no. He can stand on 22 and he can only get to 18. And he can't, he can only touch him there. So he can, he can stand here. Almost 100% safe. Absolutely no reason to stand there. This makes it a two dice possible. Okay, fourth down's good. So this is a lot of dice to touch him with this guy. You can touch him, but it's like a three, four, three, rush, rush. And he just gets knocked down 75%. Well, not 70, everything, but one in 36. So. It's not worth doing that. It's not worth touching him with this guy. So, But if this had been just a push. You know, a very small chance. It's just better to be on the sideline. Right? Whatever the chance is. 1 in 12. Like 1 in 5,000. 1 in 10,000. <laughs> there's a chance. Whereas if you stand here, there's no chance. Maybe he should have put something stronger on the sideline here to keep, you know, to threaten the surf better.
Yeah. Uh, yeah There's more than one time he should be in Chun's column. Oh well, he's dodged out that way. So, score without dice. It's probably still worth, like, you know, making a three dice blitz with somebody. Because you do want to win 2 0, but I'd probably just score, actually, yeah. Obviously, the chance of making a removal. And how bad you'd feel if you didn't score. <laughs> Is probably worth scoring. So yeah, Fez in a very, very strong position now. 1-0 up. Oh, well, both KOs come back for Spinky. Five. Ten players versus 11. 1-0 up. Very, very strong for Fez. Like, you know, two nil realistically the best result you could get. You know, winning three nil or something is is unrealistic. So, yeah, this is dreamland for Fez right now, a nightmare for Andre. Andre has got to beat Gorgo Bay two nil to get a playoff um, for the for the progression from the group. So, I mean, at the moment, it's not at the moment. Right? He hasn't won two nil yet, Fez. Something could happen, he could make some horrendous decision, he could have some horrendous dice, but it's looking like he's going to win 2-0. Unbelievable, Jeff. Seeing as it's taken so long here, we can look at the grips, grips again. Yeah, so go, go, be 2-0, 2 and 0 2 no. he's absolutely fine, he's 100% secure. He's actually, he's pretty much won the group now, right, because Spinky ain't winning this game. Maybe, maybe Spinky can draw this game, but go, go, be has pretty much certainly won the group now. And Fez and Andre have exactly the same, touchdowns for, touchdowns against. Yes, we are guaranteed knobs in the knockout rounds because the group was three knobs and a dark elf. So it was pretty much guaranteed we'd have a dark elf <laughs> qualify along with an imperial ability team. <laughs> Nah, I'm being unkind to knobs, honestly, and, and un unkind to Gorgo Bay as well, who beat who won both the games, right? Like, Again, like, knobs are still just like a, uh, they're just a bash team, so you know, so you can get into trouble with them as well, so you know. Full credit for Gorgo Bay negotiating his way through the group. It's just banter. Oh, wow, well, there you go, there. One of the point of failure's gone, he just catches the kickoff. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Rando, yeah. Take, take the opportunity to uh, have a go at knobs. They're not even the second best team in the starter set. It's looking even more over. The only sad thing for Fez here is not knowing the result of the Andre game, right? Because, I mean, it, it looks like if he gets a 2-0, at worst, he's got to do the playoff. Like, you can't imagine Andre beating Gorgo Bay 3-0, right? That seems ludicrous in the extreme. So if he can get the 2-0 win here... That will at least guarantee him the playoff game, you'd think.
Oh, well, there's a Kaz back. Oh, it's just a, it's just a line. That one, that only like keeps him one player down, right? Because he got the KO, and he's giving up blocks here, including a 3D from the ogre, maybe. So, <laughs> it's a pal. Surely gonna 3D with the old guy, right? Gets him. Oh no, it's a bodyguard. Doesn't get him. Sad. Sad. So, no removals this turn, <laughs> but still in a very strong spot. No surveillance, it wasn't. <laughs> it was a wild foul. Um, he caged around a prone bodyguard, you know, who could only uphill a blodger and then fouled him, got sent off, didn't break AV, didn't get uphill. So, yeah, I did not like his, did not like his guard foul. And then his ogre. Unfortunately, spiky shieldy ogre, flaming head ogre, was demolished. And now, ribbon ogre, reign supreme. Well, maybe not. Is he going to get one dice to oblivion? No. Oh wow, he gets to smash the uh, leader now with the ogre. That's incredible, isn't it, if it activates. Absolutely incredible hit. Making his kind of safe blocks first. I mean, kind of safe, right, because They've got uh, they've got a reroll available, but only but there are still a one in thirty six to fail. Whereas the older one is uh, one in two hundred sixteen to fail completely. Could have stood this guarder up a long time ago. Wow, not a great turn of block dice for Fez. Has to be said. There we go. What? Dude, I, you have to 3D him. He's so good to 3D. Okay, I mean, he gets the Kaz. He gets the Kaz off too. But, like, I think you have to 3D him. I think you absolutely have to make that a 3D. But, 
I mean, the 2D works. So, that's a reroll gun for Spinky as well, isn't it? Because he already used it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight players now. Wow, brutal. Brutal. Man, this must be horrible to not know what the result is for Fez because, you know, he can't even celebrate that he's qualified. It's likely that he qualifies, right? It's unlikely that Andre beats Go Go Bear 2 0. But it's possible. And at least Andre knows exactly what he's got to do before it starts. I don't think he'll be able to beat him 3-0. I don't think he'll be able to beat him 3-0. Knobs versus Del Delves. 3-0 seems off the table for Andre, but 2-0 is possible, right? You know. Tingle's completely possible. Score your own drive, turn them over and score on theirs. So yeah, that's... That's going to be a stressful watch for Fez. But he's... Uh, he's done nearly enough. I mean, well, he hasn't done... I mean, he hasn't scored yet, right? But <laughs> it's looking pretty inevitable that he gets the win here, the 2-0 win. But he still has to go and do it, you know, and things could happen. Got to be super safe, get into range without any dice on turn 16, that's what he wants. I want to see. I want to, every turn, I just want to see a 3D Ogre Blitz, honestly. <laughs> he might Blitz the Bodyguard, mightn't he? He might Blitz the Bodyguard here. The bodyguard's a good player, but obviously the Imperial Thrower, you're more likely to hurt him, because um, you've got a... can't work out the odds. <laughs> well, 75 if you just Blitz him on 2D. And Kaz him. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my god, King of the Ogres. <laughs> Absolute no mistake about it. I am definitely I am definitely on a block ogre train now, by the way. Before I I valued more guard, but now Wow. Wow. Block is the way, hundred percent. Yeah, this is looking really good. Yes, that's true, surveillance. That is true. But the problem is, if you win 2-0, if you go 2-0 up and he scores, and he gets it to 2-1, and you don't get to 3-1, then... Oh, no, that's still better, isn't it? That's still better. No, no, then 2-1 is worse. Yeah, 2-1 is worse, right? 2-1 is worse than 2-0. So, you don't want to go 2 0 up and then he gets one. So, so 3 2 is better than 2 0, but are you, have you got time to go back down and do that? Not really. So, he could have tried like two or three turn and go 2 0 up and then hope hope he gets a third. But um, the problem is, what if you don't score back in time and you only win 2 1? 2 1 is definitely worse than 2 0. I'd take the guarantee 2 0 here. I would, I would definitely take the guarantee to him now. It's like it's so unlikely that Andre scores three and wins versus Golgo Bay that, like, even if he wins, Andre's likely to win two one, right? So, but yeah, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. He could just, he could have tried for like a two or three turn score. The thing is, this was ten versus ten at the start of the half. No, eleven versus. 10 at the start of the half. 
So actually, like, it wasn't miles ahead. Like, if Spinky had started with six players, then yeah, of course, you, you know, you try and score as many as possible, but... I think try and make certain of the 2-0 was, was, was the correct play. And it's still not certain yet, is it? You know, things can happen. But yeah, it's weird, isn't it? The the, the tiebreakers, you know, do definitely favour like Wood Elves and stuff. Oh god. Goes back. Like it's not over, is it? Like you know, he really he's, he's made a lot of removals, but you really don't want to have to roll any dice in turn sixteen. Should have gone here, shouldn't he? Because of the uh, fend. I think it's definitely better to put him here and then push him to there. Just a push. Hmm, I would have definitely kept the ogre in one of these two. If you, if you put him on him, then he's got to bring in like everybody to punch you, which is fine. Then you go down this way next turn. Or if you go on him, then he's got to like dodge away or, or do something to try and fight you. So I'd have definitely put him on one of these two. This would have been weird if this was like a Wood Elf versus Wood Elf game, right? Because, <laughs> like, that's going to be interesting with uh, Strider and Tree. Maybe Tree will just, like, try and score in two turns versus Strider. And then just, you know, and then maybe Strider will just try and score back in two turns. And maybe they will just have, like, a 4-4 game or something. It's kind of possible. But, like, with an ability, you don't really have the ability to do anything except try and go for the 2-0 I don't think I re realistically I think this is about what he could have done this is decent this is decent defence from Spinky spirited defence from Spinky a draw will put him in a you know a somewhat solid position well he's he's ahead of Fez at the moment so a draw it, like I mean the problem is like if losing 1-0 doesn't help him so so while this is solid defence from Spinky he has to get the draw so he has to be more aggressive this isn't good enough. This is just helping Andre at the moment. Yeah, the problem now is he's basing the bludger, right? Who can just dodge away, whereas last turn if he'd sat on the tackler. I think that's a lot better. He's in range, he's got two turns. He's got loads of players over here now, hasn't he? What's this, four, six players? And all of these are bunched up. So yeah, he's got away from the LOS. That's pretty strong. He should be able to barrel down next turn. And
Oh. Nobs, oh please. And here we go. We get to make a mega bunker cage. And uh, while Fez is not yet qualified for the knockout stage, he's in a very, very, very strong position. Yes, I will be doing it live. On Friday, there you go. Gets a full power. It's hard even to even to touch the uh, blitzer now. So there were points where it looked a bit dodgy for Fez, honestly, but um, certainly made up for it with that break down the break over the side. You know, perfect timing, and he's got the two nil. I guess there's a chance of like a timeout. <laughs> Honestly, Spink has got so few players. Seven players, even if he gets a timeout. It's unlikely to be good for him. Obviously, no one turn. No one turn with uh, three stand firm players. So it's just a timeout and just to affect the touchdown difference of Fez. So this is what I mean, right? Spinky's not giving 110%, right? You know, at this point, this is what I mean. Like if this was, if this was for Spinky's tournament life, he would be setting up to do the to do the time timeout, right? So this might affect Go Go Bay a little bit in his game versus Andrew, right? He won't be giving like 110%. To uh, you know, minimise the touchdown difference or things like that. It's just a bit of fun for Gol Gol Bear. He's definitely won the group. So um, yeah, I mean, not, not to say that he won't try. You, you know, he'll definitely try. I'm sure he'll definitely try. He just won't be trying 100%. Oh my God, there is a timeout. <laughs> there is a timeout. Now Spinky may feel obligated to try. He doesn't. He just ends the turn. Fair enough. Absolutely fair. So there you go. Um, and there you go. 2 0 win for Fez. And got to feel sorry for Spinky there. He was in the prime position to join Go Go Bay. That loss means he's definitely out. And it means Fez is maybe qualified. He has a win. He has three touchdowns for, two against. So. If Andri beats Gorgor Bay 2 0, then Spinky, not Spinky, <laughs> Fez and Andri will have to have a playoff um, best of two or three match series to see who qualifies. I think that I think they're a best of two or three. I think that's how it is. I should really find out. <laughs> I'm gonna say it's a best two out of three. Which is actually really hard, to, really hard to have in three days, isn't it? Tiebreaker matches, but I mean, there could be multiple ones. Official rule book, here we go. I'm reading the official rule book.
Okay, it's just a tie-breaking match, right? Okay, a decisive tiebreaker match with overtime activated is organized the next day. So it's just one match. It makes sense, they've only got three days to organize it, but I thought, you know, you never know, right? They might do the series. So it's just it's just gonna be a single one-off tiebreaker match with overtime activated. So that might happen between Andre and Fez. There's a decent chance, I mean, decent chance, right? Andre's a really good player. Um, Dark Elves could just lose to a bash team, right? Like, you know, something happens in their offense. Critical Snake gets scored on. 2 0 loss. It's absolutely something that can happen. Um, so, yeah, that will be on Friday at 9 30. So, there you go. Check it out. But at, at the moment, commiserations to Spinky. Congratulations to Fez. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.